Hey, it's Effers. Let's talk Computex. I'm probably going to cut this part at the beginning because this video might be so long that I'll have to make it into multiple parts because I don't think I can upload videos longer than 15 minutes onto this new channel. So this will probably be a very long multi-part video. I will have timestamps on everything in the video description. And I will probably cut this part to the front too, actually. This is how you cover your messy bed. You put your mic stand in front of it. See, now it looks nice. So before we get started, I want to talk about this thread that I actually discovered the night before I'm recording this video. Uh, Computex Day 1 just happened. Computex Day 2 is happening right now. And there's so much stuff that I want to talk about Computex Day by Day. And like... Let me just show you. This is me dragging at full speed down the window. And that's just page one. And then we can go into page two. And there's even more stuff. This is pages of stuff. So what I'm going to do, as opposed to finding what I'm interested in, is that I'm going to go on an adventure web browsing like the rest of you guys would. And click on stuff that I think is cool looking. Or at least cool enough to like go into the article and see if I can get any further information to share my opinions on the hardware that's coming out and present ideas in relation to the hardware that is coming out. So let's start doing that. So new motherboards from ASRock Z170 Gaming K6 and Extreme 7. Uh, it seems like ASRock is going the ASUS route with this gold color, but they also have a red color. I'm not sure if they're going to have too many different features from one another, but you can already see that this has multiple M.2 slots. One, two, three. So this is actually really good for water cooling enthusiasts because you can just have a ton of 512 or 1 terabyte M.2 SSDs here and have no storage anywhere else. This is awesome. But I wonder how expensive it's going to be. It's probably going to be really expensive. I see dual Ethernet, four USB 3s. I'm not sure if this is a USB Type C, so let me click on this article and find out. That's how this is going to work. They're not providing info on the USBs. Whoops. I didn't mean to press F12. Looking at this compared to like these, this might be a USB Type C, and then there's four USB 3s or six. While this one has a, two USB 2s, four USB 3s, and a USB Type-C, MSRPs aren't confirmed. There's not really like a lot to get excited about with motherboards nowadays. A lot of the high-end ones are really fully featured. But I think what's really cool is how many M.2 slots this one has. We're going to have to wait for these motherboards to come out to see how truly amazing they are in terms of their performance with hardware put in them. Because you can have all the features in the world, but it doesn't matter if your motherboard doesn't work. Entry level Z170 HD3. This is an LGA 1151 board ready for Skylake processors. This is entry level. So I assume we're talking like a $100 less or less motherboard. Uh, has one PCI Express 316, one PCI Express 216, electrical X4. So this operates at X4. Uh, and two PCI Express 2X1s. This probably will have crossfire support, since cross, uh, but it probably won't have SLI support because that's just a common thing among motherboards with this kind of PCI Express support. Uh, but this is just a normal motherboard. DIMM slot supporting dual channel DDR4 memory. That's probably the biggest deal out of all these. DDR4 is already going down in price. Here's a micro ATX equivalent that's similarly featured. Uh, hopefully this would be like a $80 or less motherboard. Asus has an X99 micro ATX motherboard with all black, silver, white colors. This is awesome because it can match everything. I love being able to see stuff that is a base um, color that you can put whatever color you want on it. Unless it's like red where there's a ton of red stuff so it's really easy to match red. But otherwise I usually prefer all my hardware to be black with black or silver accents. This is one of MSI's newer motherboards. This is their um, 
LG1151 that I was talking about earlier, but it has a different good looking heatsink, so this might be a different motherboard entirely. Still has that similar aesthetic that MSI's always had. It says they went away with the Jig Gaming 3579 scheme that they had. Four DDR4 slots, three PCI Express 3x16 slots, so this... Sh Assuming that they're all PCI Express 3x16 slots, that means that this one probably runs at x16 and these two run at x8, which means it'll support triple Crossfire SLI, which is awesome. Two M.2s, one here, one here. So it'd, it'd be cool if this ends up being like a super enthusiast level motherboard where you can really overclock the processor with its 10 phase VRM and have triple SLI and 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM. This, this could be the lowest end choice for an enthusiast of that level. But let's move on to the X99 Godlike, which is... They definitely have that aesthetic. They want this motherboard to look godlike. It even says godlike on here. I kind of am not a fan of this godlike text, but you probably won't pay attention to it or see it. 12 phase VRM, so this will be an even greater overclocker. You can look at these motherboards and tell that this is a 2011 3 and this is a F1151 because 2011 3 socket is huge compared to everything else. 8 pin and 4 pin ATX. 8-pin EPS and 4-pin ATX power connectors. So I wonder if that'll contribute to the motherboard's overall functionality or whether it's just going to help the CPU overclock. Because I can't think of any hardware that supports more than quad fire or 4X SLI, this fifth slot, which is which I would consider this the fifth slot, isn't probably going to be necessary unless you are going to be putting water blocks and creating single card, or I mean single slot card solutions out of these. So you can have one, two, three, four slots taken here, and then you have this fifth slot or this fifth slot usable for something like a sound card. It's looking like it's going to be around the same area as all the other high-end X99 motherboards, aside from the fact that it has a polarizing aesthetic and perhaps better overclocking, more gaming-oriented X99 motherboard. ASRock LGA 1151 motherboards. See, I want to talk about the features on this one too. It looks like it supports triple SLI crossfire. This one supports dual. But it's like all these motherboards are pretty much the same. Like in terms of features. What matters is how much they'd be able to overclock and what their gaming performance is. Because there have been some uh, motherboards like the SLI Crate Edition, which for some reason just bomb certain games. And, and by that, you can look at OC3D's review of the Z97 SLI Crate Edition if you want a comparison in that regard. This is the MSI 970 GD45T OC, but white. So it's the same model number. But I noticed that when you go on Newegg and look up this graphics card, if I learned how to type. I, I'm apparently failing that. This is what they have in place of the black one. You go here and it shows the black one with the blue accent on the fan and the white one with the white accent on the... F I mean the black one with the white accent on the chassis. So, they're the same model. It seems like they're just going to be sending these out instead of black ones, which is okay, I guess. But some people may prefer the dark one, but that doesn't really bother me. I was expecting this GPU to come out a while ago to match with their crate motherboards, but it never did. And they're making a new Nightblade PC, which Linus reviewed, and I'll have a link, or Luke from Linus Tech Tips reviewed, which I'll have a review, I mean, a link to that review in the video description. So, new, not necessarily a new desktop PC, the Nightblade has been seen before, but this seems to be pre-built. It's called the QB, uh, 4K support, so I assume it's using a GPU that supports 4K if it's going to be using 900 series GPUs. I don't think any of them don't support 4K. So I'm not really sure why this is like a huge selling point. But if you're getting this pre-built, you're not going to have to deal with the pain of building in a case this small. So if you have the money, it may end up being an awesome option. Uh, X99 motherboards, Gaming 9, and Power. Um, I, I honestly forgot that MSI still made their Power motherboards with the yellow theme. I don't think they made any in a while. MSI is doing really good, a really good job with maintaining the aesthetic of their red product line. And what I mean by that is, you look at their 970 Gaming and their 960 Gaming and their 980, 980 Ti Gaming, they all look the same and th these motherboards are all having an aesthetic that complements this like striped theme 
that also you can see on the GPUs. So you can end up like, for example, creating a build that's basically all Corsair hardware and MSI hardware. And what I mean is that you could have a Corsair power supply, Corsair case, Corsair fans, Corsair cooler, and then you could have a Corsair mouse and mouse pad that's black and red with an MSI motherboard, uh, MSI graphics card. And then you don't really need to worry about the SSD or hard drives because you're not going to see them. I like that kind of matching because color matching is one thing, but matching an aesthetic design between two different pieces of hardware is usually difficult, but MSI is making it easier, and I think that's cool. Now, in terms of their yellow stuff, they haven't really made a yellow graphics card since the 270X Hawk. Uh, so I'm not really sure what you would put on this aside from black hardware. So we'll see if people, so this might be better if you're um, willing to mod, take off your chassis, paint it yellow, stuff like that. CryoRig actually announced this before Day Zero did. They already showed what their lineup was going to be. The builds that don't support tall CPU coolers like a Phantom 240, for example. This will look nice in and you won't have any problems with color matching. They have custom mod covers for R1. This is cool because you can, or for the R1 Ultimate and the R1 Universal, this is cool because that means you can essentially match it with any motherboard red for like every motherboard ever because everyone makes red motherboards except Asus. Orange and green for Gigabyte's um, different model motherboards. Blue for some of MSI's different model motherboards and then black and white if you are... I don't know why they would release a black one to buy when they all come with black ones except for the universal which comes with white ones but that's not something for me to question it's still it's still cool that they're releasing all these colors it'd be cool if they had like a yellow and this would also make it really easy to paint if you could just buy it like this plasti dip it or metal dip it i'm not sure if plasti dip works on this kind of metal we don't know what it's made out of let's assume aluminum so here's the Z1, this is the heat sink, and then this is it with fans on it. You can see it has a slim 140 here, and then a thicker 140 here. I forget what their model names are called. But yeah, as you can see, you can't put a third fan here because of the way the heat sink's designed. It's radial airflow, which means that you're going to see air circulate through this heat sink. Now, I'm not sure how this will perform, but I assume that this would mean that there's a higher air capacity in the, within these heat sinks, which would mean that it, this can handle more heat. So hopefully these perform well and they look nice in computer builds otherwise there may be questions about the practicality especially if it doesn't perform well and it costs too much or if it doesn't perform significantly superior to its competition like NHD 15 um, Fantex PHTC 14 PE is their large cooler and you can put three fans on that hopefully this is a well performing cooler otherwise it's gonna kinda get lost in the on the shelves Unless you're a huge Crow Rig fan. This is what I was talking about with the examples of the motherboards. Red one to match Asus ROG, orange to match Gigabyte, and then Gigabyte Sniper, and then blue for MSI. Is that yellow back there? This looks like a yellow one. They didn't show this before. Because I think they only showed black, white, blue, green, orange, and red. If they have a yellow one, then that means it's just all the colors of the rainbow except purple, pretty much. And no one makes purple motherboards. Here their black and white option for the M9 with the 92mm fan. This is what a C7 looks like on an MITX motherboard. They have a power supply, IoT enabled, doesn't say what their certification is. The Internet of Things idea is so computers can interact with each other without human interaction involved. So the Internet of Things, so having this be the Internet of Things enabled and it's a power supply makes me think that this is going to send data to your computer without human interaction, which means you're not going to have to install anything yourself. You're not going to have to tell it to do anything yourself. It's going to basically be automated. 80 plus platinum, summer 2016, 660, 860, and 1000 watt options. Summer 2016, damn, they must have like just made the chassis and showed what the chassis is going to look like. I, I don't know what this is. Oh, this is the uh, internet of things that I was talking about. Hybrid liquid cooling solution. A40, A40 Ultimate, 880 high. So they're making liquid coolers, finally. A strength of both air cooling and liquid cooling in a package. Hopefully this fan isn't loud, though, because that would... 3,000 RPM PWM control 70 millimeter fan, that sounds like it's essentially a louder liquid cooler. So if this, unless this performs amazingly, it's going to be kind of unattractive, because think about it. 
Think about how loud a stock cooler is. This better not be as loud as a stock cooler. Or you might as well get an air cooler, or one of Cryo Rigs air coolers, or a liquid cooler. Unless these cool to such a degree that the noise is worth it, which is almost impossible. This, do this doesn't make a whole ton of sense, but we'll see. Maybe this fan could be silent. Uh, maybe the cooling performance can be phenomenal. Uh, maybe... Because this is the sink, heat sink and then this is the fan. So maybe you don't even need the fan. And I assume this would come with like a three-way splitter. It'd be cool if it came with a five-way splitter so you could run push-pull. I, I really want to see how this is. Because if it's not too much louder than a lot of other CPU coolers, then it might just be a cool idea and a cool aesthetic, in which case it'd be worth buying. But if it's too expensive for its performance, then it's probably not going to go anywhere. Cooler launcher, Cooler Master launches the Master Case. The Master Case, world's first sized mid tower, mid sized modular tower with exterior expandability. <sighs> Let's see. 465, 460 millimeter tall modular tower. Mastercase 5, Mastercase Pro 5, and Mastercase Maker 5. So I assume this is the Mastercase 5. Two 120s, 120 in the back. So it seems to have the fan slots full, which is good. Um, three hard drive cages up here. None down here. Don't understand why they would do that, but whatever. Maybe four radiators. But there's five hard drive cages total. So and you can have two here. So there's so you can have three and a half inch hard drives regardless of whether you run a liquid cooling setup or not. Good job, Cooler Master. Two two and a half inch drive slots, uh, NZXT style. Uh, I like that. Seven PCI slots. Good. We'll handle triple SLI. Um, extend a uh, raised radiator mounting location, which is good job, Cooler Master. With all this, and then two five and a quarter inch bays, you can probably remove. I wonder if you can remove these, if it's going to be fully modular. Like, if you can remove one, but keep one, or remove the top one, or the bottom one, if you choose. It seems like it would be a little, um, limiting. Because this raised thing prevents any, um, can prevent, like, certain ra radiators of certain thicknesses. Or radiators of s that are a little bit longer than normal, that may not be standard size. Or... It's stuff like that. This seems like it'd only be able to support AIOs. It might not even support 280mm radiators. May only support 240. Hopefully this isn't too expensive because I see this like um, versing cases such as the M3 Pro or H440. So if it costs more than like 110 bucks, it's probably not going to be very attractive to a lot of people. I like this design here. Two fans or three, if you find a way to put three in. If you, uh, yeah, you can remove the uh, two and a half inch, I mean five and a quarter inch base, and you can move this drive cage up here. So this is interesting. A lot of interesting designs going on here. And then they're showing new uh, in wind showing liquid coolers. I mean they're liquid coolers. What else can you really say? Let's see how they perform when they come out. Fans from Deep Cool, a case from Deep Cool, another case from Deep Cool. I like this idea, Show, just showing off your graphics card in a small form factor case. This is a cool design. Hopefully it's not too expensive though. The thing you have to understand is that some of this stuff isn't even being covered by uh, media outlets on YouTube, for example. So this, I, that's one of the reasons why I keep track of this thread instead. Silverstone showing off some Raven X cases. RVX01. I like this white and black one though. But it doesn't look like the same case as this one. Yeah, it's a MM. Oh, that's not that MM01. They're not showing the model of that case. Oh well. But I like the way this one looks. Though, because like you could put. Like they're, they're, exam they're making an example out of it perfectly. Crate Edition. Heat Sink. 970s probably has a crate edition motherboard it would be a really easy to color match in that case so silverstone has, is announcing a 700 watt x sfx power supply now 700 watts probably is too much for anything that you would put an sfx power supply in 
except for one case that I can think of. And that is these cases, the PC-05, 05S, 06S, 07S. This is perfect for the 700 watt power supply. I really wouldn't mount this on a wall, that's way too dangerous to me. The 05 supports a mini ITX motherboard, those 5S supports mini ITX, those 6S supports micro ATX, and the 07S I just lost it. it. supports ATX and EATX. So this is cool because you can put this 700 power supply in something like an 07S, despite how expensive these cases are, and create like an SLI or Crossfire ATX build that's super thin. You can end up making super powerful computers that do not take up a lot of desk space. So to be honest, the power supply itself is cool in concept, but it really gets a leg up when it comes to being able to make compact builds like these so i think that's really interesting it'd be i'd love to see a tech channel that has access to all this hardware be able to make something in like an 07s have a 700 watt sfxl power supply from silverstone and have like two 960s in it with an overclocked i5 or i7 processor if they're able to overclock it at all i believe we saw the area 51 at ces 2015 the first time we saw this and they're showing it off again at Computex and it looks like it's ready to come out so come out so people can review you because that's all I want to that's all I'll be able to do is see reviews because I'm probably not going to afford this here showing the internals of the area 51 can support up to three GPUs three three and a half inch two two and a half inch uh, ATX power supply it looks like three chassis fans 120 millimeter cooler so that's what it looks like. It, that's, that looks like a fully decked out Area 51. But to be honest, all this having all of this would probably cost you like $4,000 plus. Because that's just how much Alienware charges for their hardware. When you start going into the, I have a lot of money and I want a cool looking computer that has literally everything. If you're, into, if you're like the very small percentage of people that are in that market, that's what it's, it's going to cost that much for you to get a computer like this. Silverstone announces new cases. I already talked about their power supply, which is awesome. Uh, and I'll have link in I'll have links to all this in the description as well. New cases. This looks like a server oriented case, tons of drive bays, not no fan inputs here. Cases on the I mean the inputs are on the inside, so it looks like they're wanting this to be like business oriented or server oriented cuz most gamers use these front inputs, so just having them under the, aside from the power button, having them under the front panel would be unacceptable. This is cool. They have this, if you remember the RVZ01, they announced an RVZ02, which I'll click on this link here, which is, which satisfies an aesthetic, but it kind of makes it vertical exclusive. You can't lay it down horizontally like you could the other ones but i do like this aesthetic more and i would and if i had an rvz01 i would mount it vertically anyway so the rvz02 is kind of makes the rvz01 pointless to me but this case which doesn't seem to have a name according to tom's hardware um could end up replacing both of those because this even though it's vertical here the fact that the Silverstone text is vertical doesn't actually seem to bother me from looking at it, even though I do get bothered by stuff like this. Uh, the fact that you can carry it means that this is like a LAN rig, and the fact that there's side panel windows with open airflow that looks like it has fan slots. I don't see any here, but I see one here. <coughs> that could mean that this would be the LAN rig MITX build of choice. But... Again, we'll have to see how this competes because Corsair has a case, and if this is as expensive as that MITX case, the 380T, I believe it is, then this won't compete. If it's the same price as the RVZ01, this will compete. But even then, there are new MITX cases coming out. There's the through ITX. There's steep competition, so you'd have to um, be very... This would have to be exactly what you want. In terms of having it be vertical on a desk and be able to carry it to lands and whatnot. This would have to be exactly what you want, most likely. 
And then here's two more cases. Doesn't really seem to be gaming oriented. This one seems to be a little bit more since it has airflow. But with the Enthu M coming out, this probably won't compete with it, unfortunately. And then this looks like another business oriented case. Here's some snapshots of some of the cases they were talking about. Eight three and a half inch drive bays that are, they're, I guess they're slot bays, but I don't think they're hot swaps. So, and then here's their like carryable MATX, I mean MITX Raven RVZ02, or not RVZ02, um, ML08 land rigged style. I don't know. I wouldn't really trust a, a computer standing up like this out of land because I'd be afraid that someone would knock it over unless it has feet that go out really far. So, like, it, which would destroy the case of this. I mean, this, destroy the point of this case being so thin. At home, at least. Here's their 700 watt SFX power supply. You can see everything in there. Now, this got me really excited because I've already seen uh, reviews of this. Well,. Uh, yeah, I've, uh, Hardware Canucks already reviewed this case. So, and Fantex has already released this case, though it's not available as of the recording of this video in retail. But it's also obviously really exciting because the Evolve was like, okay, it's it's this their first time trying a case of this kind of uh, style. But the Evolve ITX and ATX were something that I got really excited about because it seemed like you can build anything in them. Like the way they designed the case, you could essentially recommend it to anyone and the evolve atx continues that see i can cut stuff like that out so i don't ruin the audio so going on i love cases that come with two fans in the front because this supports triple 120 or dual 140 and will and it comes with a 140 in the back and it supports triple 120 or dual 140 in the top the reason i like this is because you can move these 140s up because you're not really going to need this air blowing into here especially if you have your power supply facing down Unless your hard drives are going to be hot for whatever reason. And you can just put a 280mm cooler here and every fan slot is occupied. So that's really cool. Uh, it, I really wish Fantex would release a liquid cooler so I could have like that consistent brand look. Because if you're going to be showing off a Fantex logo right here, as you can see here, it'd be cool if you had a Fantex logo on your CPU cooler. That's just an um, um, obsessive aesthetic matching thing to me and what's also really innovative about this case is that these five um modular pieces of metal that you see here you can replace with hard drive sh shelves it comes with three so you can end up putting three here and having room for your gpus or having like a if you have like a extra slot here to where you have a dual slot card here and then a dual slot card here so there's no room here you can put your third hard drive slot here and then put the other two above it it creates a lot of flexibility in terms of being able to put longer gpus in as opposed to having there be a hard drive cage this this is the future or this is what i hope the future would be but th in this case is just so awesome in terms of being fully dust proof having this really easy to install fan mounting system having this uh having this aesthetic being made out of high-end materials. They say the side panel window has been improved in terms of its durability. Pretty much, you, I could recommend this case to anyone. Um, if I were to, if people were to give me budgets and they have me build a computer, whatever it is, the most powerful computer that they want out of that budget, I would probably build every computer in an Evolve ATX or Evolve ITX. The cases are just that awesome to me. Cougar showing some new cases off. The Solution 2 looks the same as the Solution 1 externally. Well, hopefully there'll be some pictures when I scroll down. MX310, this looks cool. Uh, I'm not sure what these knobs are for. I guess they're fan controllers. Um, and then this one doesn't have a model number. Integrated fan screen control for dual-way fan control. Support for five fans, so one, two, three, four, five most likely. Um, two in the front, two in the top, one in the back. So every slot will have, I mean, every fan slot will have a fan controller with it usb3 ports there's one and then that's a usb2 uh charging usb port and a placement platform for users of electronic devices such as mobile phones mp3 players probably won't fit a tablet up there but it's cool that there's like a place that you can put your phone if you don't if you have like a super small desk or something cougar qbx this has been having some more circulation compared to these cases because it's an mitx case 
and it looks like it's supposed to be like an end case M1 competitor. So it's also a mini ITX case, but it's definitely more airflow friendly than this one. And it looks like it, it lo actually looks more compact. But if it has more airflow, that'd be awesome because I'd love to be able to put two fans here so I don't have to worry about putting fans on the side. Uh, if this supports radiators in the front and it's not just the same internally as the QBX, or maybe it's Kaze, I don't know. If it could support like a 240mm radiator in the front and I could put the drives here, that'd be cool because this would definitely compete with the NKS M1. Looks like they're also breaking into more peripherals because they've already made mice, but I don't think they've made a headset. This mic looks cool. But we'll see how it performs. It looks like a Kraken. So that doesn't mean it'll perform like a Kraken. But it looks like a Kraken with a cool looking mic. But what matters is how it sounds, how the mic sounds, and how much it costs. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Unless it's like atrociously ugly. 5000 DPI optical sensors on these mice. They're probably using PWM 3310s. These are probably using S3988s. 4000 DPI optical sensors. Probably using the 3310 trigger button. I'm not sure what that means. I guess this is the DPI swap. This is the scroll wheel. These are mouse buttons. So where's the trigger button? I don't see it on any of these mice. Ergonomic right hand form factor. That's these. And then these are also right hand form factor. So I guess they're more, they're probably more like death adder shape, but you really, well, not death adder shape, but they're more ergonomic with uh, um, offering more support on this end of your palm. So. But they're not really showing the other side, so it looks like an ambidextrous mouse from the angle that they're showing it at. I like the silver and black one. That's like the only one that I that looks nice to me out of all of these. This is yeah, these black and, and this black one's nice too. Okay, these are ugly. I don't like this. <laughs> and then this is like the mice that they've been making, but they made like esports editions, which doesn't actually mean anything. These are these are the mice that are already out, I believe. These are ergonomic right hand form factor, four thousand DPI, probably the same sensor, the thirty three ten. Um, orange and green options. I'm not really sure if I like that. I'd rather it just come in black, I like every other peripheral ever, and then like add an LED, an RGB LED or something. Mechanical keyboards, membrane keyboard, scissor switch, high scissor switch. I don't know what that means. Hybrid mechanical switch. What does that mean? I hope this isn't the. Uh, I hope this isn't an EU exclusive, but hybrid mechanical switch may mean that it's like a, to like a Topra ripoff or something. I don't know. If these support Cherry MX stems, this would be an interesting keyboard. But this aesthetic might not be appealing to a lot of people, especially mechanical keyboard enthusiasts. Corsair Bulldog doesn't really look that nice. Really wondering how it's going to compete with the likes of Asus's. This is a gaming oriented one that I was talking about earlier. So especially with this aesthetic. But you can also see Corsair changed their logo. They're abandoning their Corsair, Corsair gaming logo scheme and having it all just be a new Corsair logo. Which is good. Um, you can see on their website. In fact, I'll go on it right now. You look at their gaming mice, and despite the M65 RGB not having the new Corsair logo, the Saber Optical does, which makes me think that, or the Saber Optical and Laser do, which makes me think that their RGB keyboards are going to have the new logo. And if and this minimal stuff with no Corsair logo, or I mean Corsair text anywhere, is really nice. You well, there's Corsair text here, but that's not very noticeable. But this is awesome. This is a, this is like the dream aesthetic and it'd be really cool to see to be able to see in person a saber optical or saber laser with this rgb and this new logo alongside a keyboard with the new logo but they have new competition because they don't have the rights to, to cherry mx rgb switches anymore and this is where asus has made a cherry mx rgb keyboard that's 10 kilos called the claymore and the reason i am really hype about this is because despite its non-standard layout it has the Black Widow's layout in terms of its uh, bottom row. And the reason this is cool is because you can find more keycaps that support this uh, mod uh, this bottom row layout than you could, for example, with Corsair's keyboards. I'm holding, I have a K70 right here. And the bottom row is, hard, is not customizable at all unless you get Max Keyboard's uh, transparent keycaps. But there are... 
more keycaps out there that support this and you're more able to find um, specific keys for the control and alt keys. You'll have to spend less money getting um, this, having to get keycaps for this row than you would for the K70s row. And that's, and you'll understand this if you pay attention to um, group buys for keycaps or retailers selling custom keycaps like Max, WASD, etc. Even though WASD, I don't believe, supports the, um, the Black Widow-esque style bottom row, but you get what I mean. And another thing that makes me so excited about this keyboard is how small it is. This, I love the K70's um, visible switch aesthetic, even though you really can't see the switches from the top. But the fact that Asus has been able to slim this out to the point where it looks like um, the win keyless keyboards that have been trending so much, um, this could end up making it into the mainstream. This has been getting really popular. If you follow r slash mechanical keyboards, people have been making these left and right. And despite the ROG logo and the texture, it still looks nice enough. And, uh, and the text and the font that they chose. It still looks nice enough and seems to compete to some extent with the win keyless boards. Aside from the fact that it doesn't have lights at the bottom. It just has lights on the keycaps. But the fact that it's so small compared even to other 10 keyless keyboards is what's so attractive to me. And the fact that it has visible switches. Going into this link... They don't seem to talk about what these legends are. I can't read these legends. This one's, these two say light, and these say mode. So this is to change like the brightness and any profiles most likely. As you can see, there's a macro here for this alt key. And I can't read these legends. The image is too blurry. But the fact that there's a macro is exciting. Hopefully this isn't the only macro, but if this is fully programmable, that'd be awesome. Completely awesome. It'd probably be my next keyboard. Now, the Spatha was something that they showed at CES, and they were wanting to get input on what they want, what sensor they want you to have in the keyboard, and, I mean, in the mouse. And I assume contrary to popular belief, because there's no way I could believe people voted this in. The Spatha has an 8200 DPI laser sensor. I can't believe that gamers would vote for a laser sensor in this mouse. I, I just can't. I assume that the favorite was like a PixArt PWM 3310H sensor or 3366 like what's in the uh, G502. If it's wireless, then I totally understand. Also the ROG Spatha is RGB. Yeah, this is a wired wireless mouse, so I told I understand why it has a laser sensor then. Here's some shots of Asus's Curve 219 monitor. To go along with the Corsair Bulldog, since they want this to kind of be like a HTPC gaming oriented HTPC, they're also releasing the lap dog which goes with the bulldog and has a k65 rgb in it with a mm400 mouse pad in it that's basically what they are mouse not included though but knowing corsair's aesthetic these are going to be um optimized for corsair's mice if they don't track on that that'd be ridiculous corsair has new power supplies but like every power supply ever that's that has high efficiency and high amounts of certification. These are going to come out and they're going to be more expensive than pretty much all their competition ever. And we're just going to have to wait for these prices to drop to see if these are going to be worth it compared to their already released eye line. But what's cool is that they're black and white so you can match them with pretty much anything. Unlike the rest of their power supplies, which is unfortunate. Corsair also intros a second gen K70. That's what I like to call it, but it's called the Strafe. Pretty much has the same um, visible switch. You don't really see it in this uh, beauty shot, I guess you could say. But let's click on this video. I'm going to skim through it because I don't want people to just see my video. As you can see, the strafe is more featured than the K70. There's, react there's going to be more customizable lighting, despite the fact that it's only red. 
now that they have made chassis with customizable lighting and reactive lighting, it only makes sense. And I'll have a link to that video in the description. SLI bridges. Where are the crossfire bridges, everyone? People use AMD graphics cards. More 4K G-Sync notebooks. New D more info on the DDR4 memory from team. Crucial new ballistics DDR4. Finally, they make their ballistics mod. Um, their ballistics RAM have black PCBs. Never mind, but they still have these, so that's good. And they may and this one in particular is the best looking one, in my opinion. See, that looks really good. The, I said this one was the best looking one from the side, but even then, it looks the best from the top too. So, awesome. Like, that bulky design would go really well with, like, Zotac's Amp Extreme Edition coolers and whatnot. Asus is releasing a ProArt PA329Q UHD monitor. 4K, 60Hz, 32 inches, um, IPS. This is basically a fully functional productivity monitor. 100% Adobe RGB. It's probably going to be super expensive, but it's basically fully featured. You don't have to worry about this monitor not being able to do something. Asus has a... 21.9 G-Sync monitor. Uh, this is a curve. They have a curved version and a non-curved version. More info on Zotac's 980Ti Amp Extreme Edition. This push the limit text is pretty cool, even though you're not going to see it. Case mods. Graphics cards. Here's a ROG Poseidon 980Ti. It's probably going to have. This looks like liquid cooling input. So it'll support that, but it's probably just going to be like a, something that cools better than a reference 980 Ti and looks nice. So not much to talk about here. Pre-built systems with Intel Skylake processors coming out of Asus. I really don't like the aesthetic of this desktop, but I like the aesthetic of this one. This is like, if, if this is assuming this is the highest end hardware that you can put in these systems, then that means you have a lot of options in terms of how far down you can go in order to perhaps save money. Uh, it doesn't say whether it's going to support 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch, but I would assume that it's either 2, 2.5 inch or 1, 2.5 inch, 1, 3.5 inch for this form factor. This looks really nice, and it'd be cool to see how these perform on a thermal level, because we already know, we already can pretty much expect how the hardware is going to perform. They have very slim 240 and 120mm ads. We'll see how they perform. Fans look interesting. Cooler is, I like the minimalistic, just the Silverstone logo, no text on it. Cooler, but we'll see how they perform. They claim they perform as much as the, uh, as well as their thick reds, but that matter, but that is only, that can only be known if you know the fan density of the radiators. I mean the fin density, not the fan density, and how well these fans perform on their own and how much static pressure they generate. So we'll need to see reviews to make sure that that's actually how it works. Corsair releases the H110i GTX cooler. Not really sure how they can improve on the H110i GT, but we'll see. They release a, Corsair releases a 750D Airflow, basically just an open mesh 750D as opposed to a closed mesh. But if you own a 750D already, you are able to buy an open mesh. Uh, it's the same size as the one on the 450D, I believe. So don't end up buying a new 750D for this. But it comes with three fans, which is nice. Um, just like all the other Corsair 450D and above cases. Now, if you were here for the earlier part of this video, which you probably were, or if you're skimming through this video and you made it to this part, because this is probably going to be a long video and you probably won't care about every single thing I'm talking about here. Zotac has um, come into the GPU market swinging these past couple of years. They're, they're, the GPUs have been really good. Um, Zotac is pretty much on the level of like EVGA, Asus, MSI, Galax, whatnot. And this is just awesome. A three fan cooler, triple slot, probably huge heat sink. I love the beefy but simple design of their 
Amp Extreme Core Edition coolers, but this is just the Amp Extreme Edition because they don't they're not going to reuse the old Amp Extreme Edition coolers. Those were a little too much. But this is basically the same style as the Extreme Core Edition on the 970. And if you look at this and look at these grommets, you can see that this is a standard ATX power uh, motherboard, which means that this ca card isn't very long, which is surprising given the girth of its cooler. And I would love to see how this performs. This looks cool. It just looks cool. It's awesome. For motherboards that are properly spaced, you could have two of these. And your computer will weigh 150 pounds, but it's still going to be cool. 25% factory overclock on these. 7,210 memory clock, 1,253 base, 1,335 boost. I wouldn't be surprised if it can go higher with this cooler and this heatsink. Clev, which has been which has been getting a little popular due to the aesthetic of their RAM, is releasing more RAM with LEDs. It has RGB LED lighting. Good job. Only graphics cards did that more if they offer LEDs. The fact that it has RGB lighting means that it doesn't matter that it's black with a silver accent because say you have a Crate Edition motherboard, you can make the lights black and yellow or white and yellow or black, white, well, not black lights, but you can make the lights off and yellow or white and yellow or off and on at white. If you have a black motherboard, you can, I don't know if this will do spectrum cycling, but it'd be cool if it did. Be Quiet announces the Silent Base 600. I was really, really excited about the Silent Base 800 when it came out because there didn't seem to be a lot of competition. Fractal hadn't announced their R5 yet. Uh, Silverstone hadn't announced any compacts. I mean, silent cases. Cooler Master Silencio really didn't compete. So, but since then, a lot of stuff has come out in the silent market. And the 800 kind of took a step back. Not a lot of people are as excited about it. Not a lot of people care as much despite the case still being really good, but this is awesome. And the reason this is awesome is because it has a side panel window. And side panel windows are normal in cases, but the reason this is awesome for having a side panel window is because of Be Quiet's aesthetic. I loved Be Quiet's aesthetic with the Silent Base 800. The Silent Base 600 is a mid-tower. It'll probably support radiators. It has two, it's gonna come with two Pure Wings, two fans for the front and rear. So one 140, one 120. Said it came with two silent wings in the, or one silent wings 140 in the front and one 120 silent wings in the back or pure wings too. And there's the silent base 600 in black, and there's the silent base 600 in white. So confirmed. Here, there's the 140 in the front. Looks like it's going to support a second 140 there, and then there's the 120 in the back. Antec puts a new signature on its cases with the S10. Does it come with all these fans? Cause that'd be awesome. Looks like it's fully dustproof. So it seems like they're creating a separate chamber where the hard drives are not influencing the heat of the computer. But where's the intake? Like, would you have top intake and front and rear exhaust? A dedicated 120mm fan at the, at the bottom of the case moves air across the storage drives. The, there's a, there's going to be a fan here that goes up and then... These fans are, look like they're using them to cool the hard drives as well. I really don't see how you'd be able to create positive pressure in here without putting hard drive heat into your computer. Six three and a half inch drives, three two and a half inch drives. So maybe the first two chambers are three and a half inch, and the top chamber is two and a half inch. Maybe twelve and a half inch GPUs, one hundred sixty five millimeter CPU coolers, two hundred eighty millimeter radiators top, front wall three hundred sixty mil liquid cooler. But again. I wouldn't want a liquid cooler on the front because I don't want to be pulling heat from in the inside of the system onto the hard drives because that doesn't seem very effective for either half of the system. I would probably end up creating top intake and front and rear exhaust in this, even though I'll have negative pressure. 10 expansion slots, so it'll support quad SLI just fine on any motherboard. Hopefully this isn't like a 1900 though in terms of how poorly built the case is. Here's two and a half inch drive mounts it seems. The power supply chamber has room for five more two and a half inch drives. So this has tons of drive support. This looks like what the 1900 should have been. And for $500, if that's a suggested price, it better be good. So it said it had six three and a half inches, three two and a half inch drive support. All these look like they're three and a half inches wide. They're like they could support three and a half inch drive. So I'm not sure what they're saying here. Maybe it's like 
three and a half inches on the left and right and two and a half inches in the middle. Core 500. MITX. Fractal design as usual, making gorgeous cases. It doesn't come with two front fans like the Node 304. So this is looking, this isn't looking like it's going to be like a, a high level of cooling for a mini ITX build type case. But it has one fan slot and it's covered. 170 millimeter CPU cooler support. So, but I'm not really sure if that would be utilized in here as well as it would in a Node 304. Due to the Node 304 having two 80 millimeter fans in the front and bringing front intake into the case. So you're probably not going to be seeing people trying to put NHD 15s in here like they did on the No 304, trying to overclock i7s in on an MITX builds. $60 if it hits the market, that's a pretty good price, but that also makes it compete with the Enthu Evolve ITX non-side panel window version, which is five bucks more. And that may be scary for fractal design. It says it supports three, three and a half inch, but three, two and a half inch. And one five and a quarter inch simultaneously, but they're not showing it here. I only see this one three and a half inch, and then maybe you can mount a two and a half inch under it. I don't see where the rest of the hard drives would go. Ah, that's where the hard drive support is. So it says it can support three three and a half inch, three two and a half inch, and one five and a quarter inch simultaneously. So five and a quarter inch, three and a half inch, three and a half inch, three and a half inch, and or three and a half inches might be here. And then two and a half inches might be everywhere because you can fit two and a half inches anywhere, really. So this is interesting. This is cool. 280 millimeter radiator support. They have another mini ITX case called the Node 202, which looks like a competitor to like RVZ01. Um, pretty much that's the only, Silverstone's really the only company that's been able to make cases of this form factor. So Silverstone's 450 watt 80 plus bronze is $60 right now. Which would mean that it's the same price as this one. Which means right now you could get this with the XFX power supply. That would probably be your best option. But doesn't say if it's semi-modular or not. These aren't modular, but these are fully modular. So yeah, I guess it's worth. They also show CPU coolers, which I thought were supposed to come out like six months ago. Fractal Design, please. I'm still excited for them. Because we already know how much these were going to cost. We already know that they came with fan splitters. And the particular reason I'm excited with this is because an S36 in a Define S is like a, a, a one true pairing of computer hardware. And I like this kind, those kinds of things. Kind of like MSI with their graphics cards and motherboards. Patriot expands into peripherals with a Viper branded mechanical keyboard headset and mouse. So Patriot is a RAM making company. A lot of Companies will rebrand Patriot RAM. They don't show any like videos of these. These mice are not going to match this keyboard because they have red buttons. So that's already a turn off. But this keyboard is not as much of a turn off because it looks like it has a standard bottom row, which means that you can cut, you could put like white vortex double shot PBT keycaps on here and you could plasti dip the chassis so you don't need to see this ugly Viper logo. I don't like it. Sorry. Bit Phoenix shows off the Pandora ATX. Looks like it can hold a liquid cooler. It'll be able to have the airflow for SLR Crossfire GPUs as they're showing here. So you could actually be able to make more than a very minimal style. They also have two more cases, the Nova. This is nice. Some Bit Phoenix is very experimental with their cases. Sometimes they really screw up and sometimes they really get the minimalist stuff right. And with this Nova, they seem they have, has two 120s in the front, one 120 in the back. So just put a radiator in here, you're good. This is the kind of stuff that makes me happy. When all you need to do is buy a radiator and all the fan slots are occupied. Actually, no, it doesn't have top fan slots, it seems. So if all the fan slots are full in this case, and this isn't just showing the support, and it comes with these fans, then essentially you can just build a computer here to, Hopefully it's not too expensive, it'd be super cheap, and you could put an air cooler in here instead. This is insane. This is the Atlas. Looks like it deserves that name. Two side panel windows to show you hardware no one cares about, and hardware everyone cares about. It looks like a giant Air 540. This looks like it'd be really good for water cooling. Look at that. Six 120mm fans. So there's definitely airflow in this case. This really looks like a LAN rig, though. Not like in the sense that it's portable, but in the sense that you would want to show this off to people. This doesn't look like it'd be a home rig. 
are exclusively a home rig. And when shows off some cases, is this an, is this the 909? 5960X. No, that's the 909. Then what's this? Inwin, please. Is this a radiator? There's a custom cooling loop in there. It looks like it fixed the problems with the power supply having bent cable. Like you have to bend the cables on the power supply if you have a long power supply. Looks like there's more room to bet to put the cases up and it looks like they lowered the uh inputs so you don't need to bend them as much the 805 i saw this on anyone's website in black it's completely glass that's very unsafe but i don't know like the problem i have with this all glass case is not anything in terms of its design but its safety because why would you buy this and leave it at home like, why would you buy this and not show it off to people at Lance? But why would you bring this to Lance? Because it's all glass. It's a con it seems like a conflict of interest to me. Here's the 808. Also all glass, it seems. Gaming OC LED DRAM. So the LEDs are here. Hopefully it comes in black, so you can actually customize. So you, I assume it's going to be like red with red LED, black with white LED, or RGB LEDs on everything, in which case it wouldn't matter. I mean, team has really stepped up their aesthetic game because the rest of their RAM was like super ugly. Like all of it was really bad looking. This is just like everyone's showing off their motherboards because Skylake is coming out. Asus announced their DirectCU 3 cooler. They announced the DirectCU 3 cooler but then they call this a Strix series. So I'm not sure if it's a Strix series. Yeah, it's a Strix series with a DirectCU 3 cooler. But I don't remember them advertising their Strix, their older Strix like their 970s as having DirectCU 2 coolers, so that's weird. I guess they're fusing them. But this aesthetic is really cool. It'd probably look cooler from the side than it does from the front. I believe NCIX did a giveaway a while back with Wings Angel Bird and you were going to release like a new design. And this doesn't look like the, either of the nominations for winning design. This is a what much bigger drive. So maybe this is like two SSDs or tons of storage. These are regular SSDs. Mobile SSDs, USB SSDs. I don't know what they. I don't know what to call them. I'm stupid. Clev showing off more RAM. Looks like they have LEDs on top. I love this aesthetic. Like, not having the RAM cover this part and having it look smaller. I guess is the best way I can put it. Went AFK for like an hour. Zotac has another Z box. This one doesn't look like it can mount on the back of monitors. 5200U and the 970M. I mean, it's a laptop without a display or a keyboard. So for an i5-5200U and a 970M, it better be like 700 is pushing it. Think about it. A laptop that has an i5-5200U and a 970M, do those even exist? Or do most of the i5 ones come with like 960Ms? I'm not sure. The i5-5200U or the 970M in a laptop would probably be like a thousand dollar laptop. Take off the display. You're down like a hundred to 150 bucks depending on the quality of the display. Take out the keyboard. You're down like 30, 20, 20 to 40 bucks. And then take out the mouse pad. Um, considering trackpads are like $50, let's say you're down another 30. So like you're already down like 200 bucks there. So we're talking $700 would probably be like a price point that's relative to laptops with laptop hardware. And they also made a Steam box, which is, I think the same as this. EN970, SN970, yeah. M.2 SATA SSD slot. So you'd have to buy an M.2 SSD, which isn't bad. Uh, the problem I have with M.2 SSDs right now is despite that they're really good, there are they all have green or blue PCBs and it's like... That bothers me because I like having a case with a side panel window so I can look into my computer if there's any issues, not just for the aesthetic. So seeing, so buying a black motherboard with a green or blue PCB M.2 SSD, since there are none that come in black or have a chassis, is like so clashy that I just don't want to buy one. OCZ announces more SSDs. I'll, I'll be honest, it'd be cool if OCZ actually like does something that like 
puts them up into the, at least competition. They don't need the they don't need to um, break any uh, records or anything. They just need to be competitive because not enough competition, if you ask me. Seasonic titanium power supplies. They're going to be good. It's made by Seasonic. Looks nice. I like this 3D perspective that they have going on here. This is some cool looking stuff. Unfortunately, most power supplies are going to be facing down, so you're not going to see this design anyway, but it's still interesting. See, Sonic definitely realizing that they're at the top of their game, and the only thing they can do is make it look better at this point. New gaming peripherals from EVGA. It seems like these gaming peripherals are just going off in terms of the aesthetic. Like, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of it. Especially when you don't put standard mod bottom row layouts, EVGA, making me not be able to use any keycaps ever on your keyboard, thanks. Here's G-Skills Mice. I already said they don't look good. Oh my goodness. They really screwed this up. These are 1.25 unit uh, keycaps, and these are 1.5 unit. So the space bar is super small. I would not I would not buy that. Bottom row layout. Why can't gaming companies make a gaming keyboard that I can swap the keycaps on? Here's more beauty shots on the MSI, or Gigabyte's G1 Gaming. That's white and red. Six USB threes, probably eight. PS2, nice to see that. Um, more uh, USB 3.1s here, probably. Wi-Fi capability, HDMI, USB Type C. This is so fully featured, actually. Pretty awesome. So yeah, that's literally everything. Thanks for watching my Computex Day One, looking through an overclock.net thread to talk about pictures video. If there's any incorrect information that I provided, you can leave that in the comments. Thanks for watching everything. I will have timestamps on everything in the video description. And I will probably cut this part to the front too, actually. And I'll see you on in Computex Day 2, which is actually going on right now.